If you're a movie nerd like me, you've probably seen a lot of the big name sequels already, and there are only really a handful that actually stand out. And in the pantheon of the great sequels, I think I stumbled across one that really holds its own and stands among the great ones, and that is 1998's Babe Pig in the City. And most of you have probably seen Babe from 1995 because, well, it's probably the greatest children's movie ever. I'd always been aware that there was a sequel, but I was dismissive of this one because I didn't think anything could really capture the magic of Babe. But I'm here to tell you that Babe Pig in the City does capture that magic. And it captures it in a weirdly different kind of dark sort of way. This one takes place pretty much immediately after the events of the first film. Arthur, Hoggett, and Babe have now become local celebrities after winning the sheep herding competition. And with Arthur being the reserved farmer that he is, he resumes his life on Hoggett Farm. And with Babe already accomplishing the unthinkable being a sheep herding pig, he tries to help Arthur with his farming duties and is a little over eager. And almost kills Arthur, putting all of the farming duties on the shoulders of Esme Hoggett. And this is where the movie completely shifts. James Cromwell as Arthur Hoggett takes a complete backseat in this one, which seems kind of crazy because he got an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor, but that works to this film's benefit and helps set this one apart from the first. Now the Hoggets are experiencing some financial problems and are in danger of losing the farm, and with Babe's newfound celebrity and an invitation to the big city for a guest appearance at a sheep herding demonstration with a generous appearance fee, Esme and Babe head to the big city, and that's where bonkers insanity ensues. And the rest of this film essentially becomes a fish out of water tale, which we literally get in this. Now picturing this movie based just off the title, you would think it's pretty much just Babe and what amounts to New York City, which is only kind of true. This unnamed city is kind of like a mix of every major city, even with some of the landmarks. The awesome set design of the city is one of the major standouts. And don't get me wrong, the set design of Babe was pretty fantastic. With that New Zealandy Lord of the Rings-esque style, the Hoggett's farm looks like it was taken straight out of the Shire. But this sequel aims for gonzo nightmare fuel. It's like a David Lynch children's movie, and the adventures of Babe and Esme take us to some interestingly dark places that really border on being too much for a kid to see, and the stakes are definitely a lot higher here. Babe encounters enemies such as Mickey Rooney as a horrifying clown, and his disturbingly human-like troop of performing monkeys, mobster dogs, and while this animal cast certainly isn't as charming, they are much more eccentric and memorable as the previous film, although we do get the return of Ferdinand the duck. I'm not even going to comment on his subplot in this. You just have to see it. It's also quite baffling that this is rated G, but that's not to say the charm and likability aren't there. This one just goes about it differently, and who'd have thunk that Esme Hoggett could be a comedic force of nature? It's one of those sequels that you may not have known existed, but you won't soon forget. I mean, isn't it just kind of awesome when a heartwarming kids movie gets a weird cult sequel?